Tony, there's some real money in the room. What I'm really interested in hearing, man, is about your life and your story. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people see you, fans of you, but may not even know like where you're from. So mm -hmm. let's start there. Where where are you from? Oh, okay. I'm from Pomona, California. Okay, so you right here um, from Cali, man. How was it uh, growing up in Cali? It, it, more, at times, bullshit. You know what I mean? Because it was racial shit. I had to do a lot of racial shit. Didn't get along with Mexicans in high school. Mexicans always wanted to start shit with the, with the, you know, the brothers. So that was difficult. And then the cops were always fucking, you know, profiling, pulling. I couldn't drive, you know, a mile without getting pulled over. So. All that shit, but I wasn't deep in L.A. like that. I wasn't around a lot of the shit that motherfuckers were having to deal with. Yeah. We were just dealing with a lot of other shit. I lived out, you know, 45 miles east of L.A. It's more, it gets a little bit more, not country, but it's valley. You know, it's not so, so it, much So there's city. more Hispanics than it is blacks. Where you yeah, I from. think it was like a territory thing. It's way more, you know. Not, you know, I was like, man, my mother, my babysitter was Mexican. I was right. eating menudo and shit. I was right, like, right, I was right, like, right, What's right. The trip. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, right, what the fuck? right. Uh, yeah, you now you know you're around some real Mexicans. You eat that menudo. I'm eating menudo. You know, I'm like fucking. You know, they got the stone grinder for the the guacamole. Uh, they're making the salsa fresh. I mean, I'm like. Right, the masa so, for so, the money. So I didn't get all the racial shit. I didn't get all that. I didn't right. understand why I was singled out like that. So that's what it was like for me in Pomona. Yeah. Well, um, did the colors hit Pomona? Mm -hmm. Chris and Bloods. Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. how did how did that affect you? Did, were you able to bypass it? Or? No, I thought I thought I was a crip. <laughs> okay. I thought I was. <laughs> you know, if I figured I figured I, Bloods were smaller in number. Mm -hmm. But I realized later that's because they were smarter and had to be stronger in terms of survival. Because there wasn't many of them. It was, everybody was yeah. Crips. Crips were all over the place. So I felt safer with Crips. But I wasn't ever jumped into it. I didn't claim anything. I grew up at, I lived in the Angelos in Pomona. They were, they started to be Crips. You know what okay. I mean? But my mom wouldn't let me fuck with it. Right, right. But it was always around. You know, I was always running the brothers that were Crips and Bloods. How do you feel like you avoided just super gang banging? Yeah, my, my mom. <laughs> my mom wouldn't let me get out there and slang. She wouldn't let me. She wouldn't let me do none of that shit. She wouldn't let me do dice. She was like, nah. She's still like that. Yeah. So, so what kind of? I guess in in school, what kind of kid were you? Uh, I mean, I'm a reader. I like to read. Right. That's probably you know. I just books were always my thing. I just be like gone in the books right you know and athletics and right. football and shit right. um you know music entertainment i got into acting pretty quick you know i like drama i right. was like that type of dude okay well at, at what point do you get involved in like fucking these hoes exactly that part it wasn't that you know i was always girls were showing me love but i remember it wasn't until right after high school girls like gave me like I had a green light. And the green light with females was like, I could kiss this one, I can kiss that one, I was kissing this one. You know what I mean? They was just they were just coming like just coming. And I was like, come here. <laughs> you know, I was like right. welcome them. I wasn't saying no, you got me? Right, right, right. So you get a little confident uh in your your sexual uh 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 I don't know, sexual attraction. You know, you know you can attract sex that way. Right. So I think that kind of that kind of opened up the door for me even thinking about porn. Okay. So you're starting to get these girls, you know, you even thinking about porn. But where do you actually get into the industry? How does one even get into the industry? At that time, in 94, it was like 93, 94. Okay. Um... It was 1993, you know what I mean? So right. people, there was no cell phones, only pagers. Uh, only thing you had was magazines. Magazines were prolific, right. you know what I mean? Uh, you, TV was, you can, you can turn on the TV, but if you had a porn channel, your mother or your parents could block that. So you couldn't, so I, my mom did that. My right. shit was fuzzy, but you can make out uh, some ass 
<laughs> right. And you make out some fucking. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm looking at porn. That's my first, that's what I'm seeing when I'm looking at the porn. Because I'm looking. I find the magazines. Shit, once I found the magazines. and I, So at that time, that's all you had. In those, in those magazines, they would tell you, this is where we're having a party. This is where we're doing some shit. This is where the porn industry is going to be. And that's, I found, I found a date and a place, which is Las Vegas, no doubt, and the time, and I just went. I just showed up. The same way motherfuckers show up for a, a movie role. Right. You auditioned. I, I mean, I didn't know what it was going to take, but, I, you know, I think 50%, 100, 50% of success is showing up. Right, right. The best ability is availability, my coach used to say. <laughs> so, okay, boom, you show up to the audition. What's the audition like? Well, I mean, I really didn't have an audition at that moment, but I, I met a girl okay. and her boyfriend. And her boyfriend was a producer, director. His name was Ron Hightower. Look him up. Dope dude. Yeah. So he was with her, and she hit it off with me. And he was cool with it because he was like, shit, like, he was getting his, you know, he was, I relate, you know, porn was like, like that. It can be like that, no doubt. Right. But she came to me and gave me the number on the low. So me and her started hooking up. And she was pretty good. And I, and she made me better, I guess, because I was, she was like, you should make some movies. You'd be good for some movies. And I was like, all right, cool. Now, was she a porn star already? Yeah. Okay, Did, would you say she taught you some things? You say she made you better. Well, I think she made me better because it was like, you know, if I could f hang with her, if I could fuck shit out of her, and repeatedly, uh, she, that's I think she was like, okay, yeah, you, you might have what it takes, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. You, you might be good to go. So she gave me. So that was pretty much my audition. You know what I mean? And then to go back to Ron, I think Ron was more of my conditioning. So she was auditioning and he was conditioning because I would work for him, you know, once I started shooting for him, it was like three times a week at least or more. And it was consistent for months, just work through him. It was a series called Dark Alley. It's all black, you know, I was working with a lot of new girls, you know, it was just like it was, it was a black thing. So they started you off with the blacks? No, nah, I mean, they started, I, I was... I started, Ron didn't just shoot black. He right. shot everything. Right, right, right. So, but with his situation, it was just more like they wanted more black content. There was the, the demand for it. And he, Ron was, he was making some of the best at the time. You know what I mean? Right. Enough where celebrities would, you know, even Tupac had seeked them out. Uh, I remember Bushwick Bill. From the Ghetto Boys. Yeah, man. The little you know motherfucker I mean? with the big dick swinging. Yeah. Nuts still hanging. Got hoes singing piece. the blues. Rest nah, for real, piece. man. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Ron, Ron was an OG. So, I was like, I was working with an OG. Nah, for sure. For shit show, man. Hey, real tone. It's some real money in the room. 